Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Go and make disciples of all nations, Jesus commands. I am with you always to the close of the age. May I sing our intro song or hymn, Morning Has Broken. <laughs> all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, this is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been offered for us. Therefore, we come to celebrate the festival. Let us now confess our sins in penitence and faith with a sincere and a true heart. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as our souls. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now, pray the glory together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. 
you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray our collect for today. God of majesty, you led the Messiah through suffering to risen life and took him up into the glory of heaven. Clothe us with the power promised from on high and send us forth to the ends of the earth as heralds of repentance and witnesses of Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead, who lives with you and with you now and always in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Hand over to Lorraine. I really don't know what. Oh, sorry, I'm going to have to go. Sorry, I'm busy. I'll phone you later. Bye. <gasps> sorry, boys and girls. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Say hi. It's Abby and Zeke. Hi. How are you? You cold? Oh, you're cold. You're freezing. Yes, yeah, let's keep warm. Oof. Sorry about that. I was on the I was on the phone to my friend because I've been feeling I've been feeling really sad um yeah i just needed somebody to talk to uh, and it's really important that we talk to people oh thank you but that when <laughs> yes thank you to uh, when we're feeling sad and upset or angry or confused i wonder if you've been having any difficult feelings recently you have abby what about what is it what is it <gasps> going back to school tomorrow you're not looking forward to it no why oh you're just a bit shy and you're used to being at home i wonder if you boys and girls are feeling a bit like that not feeling too happy about going to school what about you zeke are you looking forward to going yes you are you love school not worried about anything let's have a listen come on you are grades he's, he's concerned about his grades yeah so you're a bit upset about that well i think it's really good that both of you have told me how you're feeling yeah because it's really important that we talk about that yeah i wonder what jesus has to say about feelings and difficulties well last week we talked about how jesus is so special and that even though he left the earth yeah which on ascension day it's called ascension day which was on thursday he left the earth yeah but before he left he prayed yeah he prayed to god for us and for himself so i reckon that if jesus prays then we need to pray too don't we so yes it's really really important that we talk to each other but there's somebody really really more important than mummies and daddies and friends and teachers that we need to pray to and that is yeah god yeah and what's prayer what is prayer that's right it's a conversation so when i was on the phone before having a conversation that's all we need to do with god just talk to him don't we it's not difficult i think the difficult part is to remember that we need to speak to God first. Whereas if you're anything like me, it, it can be the last person we speak to. Like me, you saw me on the phone speaking to my friend, you know, and it's that's that's good. But the first person, the best person is to speak to God first, yeah. So what we thought we could do, and maybe you you guys could do, is write a prayer request. This morning we've been making a prayer chain yeah okay so we're going to write some prayers and add them to the prayer chain and then we're going to put you can put them if you've got a cross at home or a picture of jesus yeah you can just hang it over there 
Oh, he fell down up there. And then as you see it throughout the week, that's a good reminder to pray. Okay, so we can pray. We can write these prayers for your shyness going back to school. And we can write a prayer for you regarding your grades. You can write anything for yourself, but also for each other. Okay, so I'll write these prayers for Abby and Zeke and we'll put them to the prayer chain. And if you look at your tidings page this week, we've got a five finger prayer activity. And if you do, you can do that and then send it in to me. And then, yeah, you can do it as well, Abby and Zeke. And then the winner, the best one, will get a prize and we'll take it around, shall we? Yeah? Okay. Shall we do what we've been talking about? Shall we pray? Okay, let's pray. Let's pray for all the kids today, shall we? Because they're going back to school. Loving God, thank you that you sent Jesus to show us how to be a really good human being. Help us to remember to do what he does. He prays to you. So Father God, we pray for all the boys and girls today as they go back to school. And those that have already gone back, we pray for you too. We pray for concentration. We pray for a passion for school. And we pray for improved grades. Not for perfection, no stress, just to get the job done in your mighty name we pray amen and next week we're going to talk about the holy spirit that jesus promised he would leave for us so next week is pentecost sunday and we're going to talk about that and say bye bye to the boys and girls bye let's do our prayer day come on We will now sing our gradual hymn.
The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, chapter 17, beginning at verse 1. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come to glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Christ Jesus, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I have had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your ma name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me. They have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me to give, I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and that you believed at the, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Be one, said Jesus. Not be many, but be one in the Christian faith. One with each other, as a faith community, as God the Father and Jesus are one. Why does Jesus today pray such a heartfelt prayer at this time? Jesus is no longer physically present in the world, but the faithful are still physically present in the world. There is a sense of stepping back to some degree. Jesus allows for God the Father to now speak and for, the, and for God the Holy Spirit to help us. Ultimately, for the Holy Trinity to emerge, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three divine persons in community. Last week we heard of the Holy Spirit and its participation in our life. Today we heard in our children's talk about prayer, prayer to God and praying for each other. Today we look to the Trinity as a model of how we can be a community. For those of you that might not know my background, I am a deacon with a day job. About a week ago, I had to say goodbye to a retiring employee at work who had been with the organization for over 40 years. The current COVID-19 or SARS-2 crisis, social distancing denied him the sort of big morning tea send off he would have normally received in a large workplace. Made all the more poignant by the fact that the timing of their leaving was not of their choosing. When I rang them on their last day, we we're all working from home, so I couldn't see him at his desk, so to speak. There was a real sense of responsibility in letting go. A sense of responsibility on both our parts, really. 
things were not the same. Things will not be the same without them. Their experience, their competence, their self that they brought to the workplace. One day we hope to see them again for that great big morning tea send off. This individual story seems to be repeating itself all around us at this time. Letting go of the normal to find the new normal. Not going back, hope for better. When I was in the office, I stayed as long as I reasonably could, continuing to patronise the coffee shop downstairs, again for as long as I could. But in the end, we just simply said to each other, see you on the other side. We both felt a real sense of stepping into the void. A sense of nothingness those Christians must have felt when Jesus departed their world, their new normal as Christians, was equally full of possibility. What emerged for them was the Holy Trinity. The word unprecedented has been used a lot in recent times. I have found more time to watch podcasts from universities and think tanks. The internet, you can get all around the world from the comfort of your own lounge room. One poignant fact I came across in one podcast was that for both speakers, one American, the other British, they both noted that during both World War I and World War II, neither country had to totally close their schools as we have now done. Unprecedented is warranted, yet hope prevails. Stepping back from this, I get a sense that there are in fact two stories running in parallel, a larger biblical narrative that embraces us, a meta history of the world, so to speak, the biblical accounts of the life, the death and the resurrection of Jesus, wrapping around and embracing our own story, the big picture story that can wrap around our own personal histories or personal stories, to embrace us as we go forward. Our challenge is to see the linkages between the two. So can our faith as Christians wrap around and embrace the events unfolding before our eyes? Today we are called upon to be united in this global health emergency, nothing less, to be as one. The circumstances are stunning even if you are not directly touched by this. And I will say one commentator in New York, I think he already personally knew of two people who had died. Millions are infected. Tragically, hundreds of thousands are dead. When I started writing this sermon, it was simply tens of thousands were dead. Tens of millions of people are unemployed, and we're now seeing the biases as having to hit women more disproportionately. And untold millions have actually been pushed back into poverty. Economically, we're talking trillions and a long road back. The only snapback you might see is in the political rhetoric. Can we see the divine lure in all of this, calling us to be more at this time? More cooperative, more just in our dealings. The call to be one is a call to engage with this pandemic as one planet, with medical researchers coordinating globally and normal priorities turned on their head. We are called to consider again the common good. What a wonderful thing that our hotels, <coughs> you know, three, four, five star, are now accommodating the homeless people on the streets of Brisbane. The GFC was sorted by the economists and the financial professionals, and that was about 10 years ago. This pandemic, however, involves researchers, doctors, economists, wellbeing specialists, everyone down to the local food store logistics manager to help solve this one. Again, I ask a question. Can we feel a sense that all through this, a sense of God calling us, his people, to be as one at this time. With such a virus sporting such a deadly admixture 
of transmissibility, delayed reveal, and author lethality to ensure that no one gets left behind, that we have a society, economy, and health system that's actually fit for purpose and fit for all, not just in time, not reactive, not risk managing most of it most of the time, but deeply capable, competent, and resilient. This is no mere call to avoid a negative and rally around some sort of flag of self-interest. Some form of new globalism 2.0, if you want to call this, call it that, is emerging day by day as we go on. It's emerging in our national trading relationships, in reordering global supply chains, in pivoting to flexible manufacturing at home, elevating the care of others, and so forth. Again, I pose a question at this time. Can we talk of God as a God of covenant, calling all to a new way of relating to the world and to each other? We actually live in a once in a lifetime opportunity to rebuild who we are as people and as a community. Just as after two great wars and a great depression, the world had to rebuild a system of nations, a new monetary system, a new system of international institutions. We might still have to do no less than the same now or in the next few years. A new business as usual is a work in progress. We cannot go back. We need to see what we have before us now, what's and all, and respond accordingly. We need to live in the now. And again, I ask, can we draw from the deep well of Christian spirituality and contemplation we have in our Christian tradition and story to live in the present moment at this time? In the church, the church has always been a place for retreat and refreshment. At this time, it is quite okay to step back so that we can see more clearly what is before us. Do we just simply want to snap back to being human doings or pivot again to rediscover a life of being a human being? Look at ourselves. We are in many ways already living the new normal. Sitting at home in our lounge chairs, looking a lot more relaxed. With the help of a few digital deacons, I'll call them in the background, sorting out the technology, we are a digitally enabled home church. How refreshing. Somewhat full circle, back to the early church in people's homes. Can we say we have been called back to our roots as a church? So, in sum today, I, I ask and I say, as Christians and church, we need to live in the now. This now could also be a time of deep prayer, like when Jesus deeply prayed for his church to the Father. We too can pray deeply for each other. Then, as now, the call is to draw together as a community. Jesus returned into the Trinity, itself a community, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We need to return to community today, a community of the faithful, the church, the body of the risen Christ. The hour has come. Father, protect us in your name so we may be one. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us together stand and affirm the faith of the church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Chris. We praise you that we can gather online and share the joy of worshipping together. We pray the time will soon come when we can share the sacraments in church again. Bless Scott and the whole team putting the service together and people everywhere who have turned isolation into an opportunity to keep in contact in different ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community. Bless people who are suffering severe anxiety about the future due to having lost their jobs and having debts to pay, especially those prone to mental disturbance and violence. We pray for the isolated and lonely and those unable to comprehend why things are so different. Help us all to support those less able people when we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, bless all who are in sorrow, need, sickness, or any other trouble. We pray for our friends on the prayer list and for those others whose names we may say aloud or pray for silently. We pray for the medical and nursing staff and all who are potentially putting themselves and their families at risk of infection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for all who mourn the loss of their loved ones, especially those who have been unable to be with their dying relatives or those far from home. May we and all who have died in the faith of Christ come to a joyful resurrection and the fulfilment of eternal life. Lord, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may in your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I don't think they cut you in, but they should. If you'd like to join me in a greeting of peace. We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. I think we are... Use our mics at this point. Um, Be with you, everyone. Mm -hmm. Be with you. Everyone. Mics are unmuted. With you, Marg. I can see you. <laughs> Annette and Jean and the big white teddy bear. Like to go 
prayer, the great thanksgiving. Almighty God and merciful Father, we give you hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless you for our creation and preservation and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such a sense of all your mercies, that our hearts may be truly thankful, and that we may praise you, not only with our lips, but also in our lives, serving you in holiness and righteousness, all our days, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. If you'd like to join with me in saying the Lord's Prayer, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. At this point, we have an act of spiritual communion as meeting physically is denied to us at this time. If you'd like to join with me in praying the following heartfelt prayer. My Jesus, I believe you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We now come to the sending out of God's people. Most glorious Lord of life, we thank you that you nourish us in these Easter mysteries. Fill us with the spirit of love and unite us in faith that we may witness to the resurrection and show your glory to all the world. If you'd like to join with me in praying the following prayer. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. Our song at this time is Blessed Assurance. Okay. You're on. You're on.
like to now gather for the blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you what is pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us all, always. Amen. And as the deacon, I say, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen.